So this little yellow Jeep, this 94 YJ, has basically taken over my life for the last year or so. I think I bought it about a year ago exactly, and it has been just massive amounts of work. From the original build that I did on Dirt Every Day, to revamping parts along the way, to breaking it, to fixing it again, everything about this Jeep has kind of been a lot of work. My dudes and dudettes made it through another work week. I was on a Motor Trend shoot a week ago and then went straight into a week at the day job and now it is finally Saturday morning. So it's time to try and get something done. One week from now, next Saturday morning, I'm gonna be driving down to Moab, Utah for Easter Jeep Safari and I need to take this Jeep. I am gonna tow it, which is kind of a blessing because uh, this Jeep's not very ready. So. We're gonna get in the shop today and see what we gotta do to get this little yellow Jeep ready for Jeep Safari. It's pretty rough at the moment. Like, I'm not gonna kid ya. It kinda got a beat down on the whole trip down to Johnson Valley and back. So let's get out here and see what we gotta do to make it right. I guess step one on a big trip like this is to try not to get overwhelmed. Write yourself a list, take some notes and see what on that list you can get done. This is what I'm trying to accomplish right here. It's kind of a lot. I also have a tow rig that I need to do a little work on and make sure that my trailer isn't gonna fall apart along the way. So with a little bit of help from organization and caffeine, I'm gonna get something done. What I'm kind of worried about is the fact that that truck is still on the lift and totally dismantled I only narrowed one side of the axle and if I want to get that Jeep on the lift, I got to put in some work on here first. So it's go time. Starting right at the crack of noon. I kind of got ahead of myself and started on top repairs for this thing. Basically this thing has had enough tops on it that all the screw holes are pulling out and like these bars up here, they kept like, that a big old gap in the middle. So I just ran to the hardware store and picked up some new 1024 screws and I'm gonna put these guys in there. This is a nut cert, basically like a rivet with threads in it. So I'm gonna put all new hardware in there and then on the top, this driver's front corner, it's kind of hard to see it, but the driver's front corner was all screwed up from Ultimate Adventure. I had like whacked a tree with this back corner and it pulled so hard on the front that it like tore that. And then it broke a little plastic piece here. So I'm in the process of fixing that plastic piece with just a piece, just a nut and a bolt and then fix those guys with some nut certs and my wife sewed that um, that section of the top back up so we should be good to go. I'm gonna button this up and then move on to something else. Getting these nut certs installed on the top of this window frame. Figured I'd show you how these work. Uh, let's see here. Trying to I think I gotta go one more step. Yep, one more. All right. Clean that off. This is the nut cert. You can see there's threads in there. And then there's this section on here where it squishes down and becomes a rivet, basically. So you get your, you gotta buy the special tool. It's a thread setter kit. I've had this one for a thousand years. I think I bought it off the Matco tool truck when I was 18 or something. 
these little things are amazing. I'm trying, sorry the camera's moving around so much because I'm trying to do camera and this. You get that on there. Oh, I need to go one more step. Get that on there, put your nut shirt in, squeeze it down, I need to use my other hand. And then I'm going to drop it down a thread. All right, squeeze it on down, make sure it's tight, and that's it. Now we've got good inserts in there that should hold this front uh, retainer bar on quite a bit better than the old uh, tech screws or sheet metal screws. So basically what would happen is like the little sheet metal screws that would go in here would just always loosen up. Um, these actual machine screws should stay tight quite a bit better. So I'm going to keep going through. I got two more on that side and a few on this side. And one of these was already kind of screwed up. I got to figure out which hole to actually mount this into. So. All right, and keep pushing on this thing, see where we end up. Okay. I think I got all my top repairs done. This channel's back in. This front passenger corner is uh, sewn back up. Time to put this thing back together. It might not be perfect, but it's Perfect for this Jeep. Come on, snap. There we go. The top is back on. It looks pretty good. I think it's fitting right. I had to bend this over a little bit so that that's not whacked sideways. And the little repairs I did up here worked. This is done. This is kind of funky looking in person because it's been repaired, but I think all in all, it's pretty good for a soft top that's going whack that's been whacked into trees a few times. So, anywho, I'm going to call that done, mark that off my list, and move on to something else. I think the first thing I need to do is pull that belly pan off and start figuring out what is going on with the transmission and why we're leaking oil like that. All right, next up is. And this belly pan, which is bent really bad, it's got about a one and a half inch arc to it from bashing into big rocks. So it's, I think what's happened is it's pushing my transmission up and making all kinds of problems. So we're going to pull this thing off and we're going to see what's going on. That oil leak on the floor is not good. Hopefully it's not something we can't fix. This poor little Jeep just, just had a rough go at it with me. I feel like it's had a harder life since I've owned it than it ever had in the 20 years before that. All right, let's get this belly pan out of here and then we can figure out what's going on with the transmission and the leak and all of that nastiness. All right, let's move this out of the way and go see what's going on. Oh darn it. I'm in the Jeep and I'm going to go for a test drive and see how this thing sounds with the belly pan off of it now. 
before it was really it sounded like the transmission was going bad but i really want to drive it without that belly pan being smashed up against the bottom of it so we're going to go test drive it and see if i really need to pull this transmission out or if it's going to be good enough for moab all right let's go for a drive couple miles from the house the truck's doing good it's not making nearly as much noise as it was um, so I'm kind of feeling like as long as this transmission keeps oil in it it'll last through Easter Jeep Safari so I'm gonna do a little loop head back to the shop and then we can actually just do fluid changes and normal stuff man this thing doesn't really make much power I'm going up a big hill right now and it's struggling all right I'm gonna keep driving put smiles on and make sure I'm not making a bad choice by not pulling this transmission out but right now I'm thinking it's staying in yesterday's test drive was a success I feel like I don't need to change the transmission out before the uh, Easter Jeep Safari so I went and did something else I went and bought some new doors for that puppy today new to me they are off of a 92 or 93 yj they're in way better shape than what i've got so we are going to try and fit these on the jeep and make it a little less junk this passenger b pillar like the whole thing is just caved in so it's time to figure out how to like pull this whole section out so that this door starts working properly again this is where the real work's going to come in if you look here this door jam is nice and straight all the way down the quarter panel it hasn't been damaged ever but you go over to this side it's pushed all the way into the seat this is pushed in probably two inches or so so I've got to get in there. I got to move this seat forward and figure out what it's going to take to get that pulled back out. I think I'm going to end up having to use the roll cage that's in here to push that out with a porta power. So I'm going to get the seat forward. Maybe I have to pull it out and then we'll start figuring this out. All right, I guess first step is going to get the old porta power out. Oh. That was loud. And we'll see if we can start moving that quarter panel out. I think what I'm going to try first is this guy. Every time I try this thing, it doesn't work. But I want to try it right now. And jam it between the roll cage and the body and see if I can get that to push in the right spot. It's going the right direction, but I don't know that, that thing's going to have enough force to make it stay. Hmm, where are we going to push from? All right, hang on, I got to get different tools out. All right, that little wedge thing wasn't making enough power to move any metal. So I've got the regular ram part of the port of power in here. I've got a foot that's going to go over there to that roll cage, that side of the cage, and then this side I'm going to have push right below the door latch or about the middle of the door latch and we'll see how it works out we have some serious pressure going on in here that's doing something it's getting real now i've got every tool i own out i got parts of my jeep all over the place i already had very little room to work in here and now i've got this place like just totally destroyed. There's my lawnmower. Um, check it out. I got sidetracked. I figured before trying to tackle this actual real big dent and difficult problem, I would start hammering on this little smaller dent that I had going on over here. And it's totally kicking my butt. I can't really get in behind here with a hammer very good because my heater duct is in the way, the heater box is in the way, the roll cage is in the way. So I've been using pry bars and uh, 
half of a dimple die as a dolly. And I've got this thing pushed out a little bit. At this point, I'm sure it's kind of hard to follow along, but I'm kind of jumping around everywhere. That dent is sort of good enough for now. I think that'll just kind of get sanded and reshot yellow spray paint. Check it out. I got this door to fit. I needed a little bit of a win, so I went ahead. Look at that. I went ahead and messed with these hinges and got that door to fit. So this thing is dialed. I've got a couple options to paint that thing yellow. I got some good like graffiti artist paint that should actually get me pretty close to the color I want. If that's not totally right, then I got some Duplicolor paint shop. That's a little too bright, but I've got enough of that to shoot a couple doors. So I've got some options there. I'm going to, I guess, call this a win. I'm probably just gonna scuff this thing up and shoot it just so I can say I did something productive today. And then I'll get over here and keep figuring out how to make this side work. As you can see, I can't even get the door to latch yet. So I need to figure out if I can adjust these hinges enough to get it to latch. And then if so, what the next step of fixing that is. All right, getting there, doing something at least. Not really doing much, but something's happening. Continuing with my total lack of focus, I am now, I'm now scuffing and painting this door which is fine. Sure, there's other things I should be doing, but I'm not. I'm doing this, it's Sunday afternoon. Might as well do something fun. I'm gonna paint this door yellow and then we'll see if we can make it look cool or if it's just gonna stick out. Can't stick out worse than a red door on a yellow Jeep. Not that any of this stuff matches. That's different. That's pretty close. Whatever, let's have some fun. Drag this thing over to the paint booth. Good. All right, let's shoot this thing yellow. It smells good. That's a cool color. Let that tack up. All right. Paint is on and drying. I'm gonna save enough for the other door. I used about a half of a can and check this out. Ooh, it looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna go put it on the door. I adjusted hinges and stuff already. And come on, get on there. There. Now it can go over here and dry and not get, oh man, I really missed, I screwed up. There's red all through here. Whatever, it's good enough. Let's see how close it is. Get that door all the way down to where it lives. How's that for color? Does it look good enough? I think it looks good enough. It's Monday evening and I'm off my day job. I'm back in the shop. The paint didn't dry on this door, so I've got this little heater set up to try and help that dry. And I brought some tools with me from work. So let's see if we can fix this quarter panel over here. I brought this stuff from work. I got some body working tools, sanding blocks, and I brought my, my dent fix home. This is a little stud welding gun, and we're gonna use that to try and fix this quarter panel that's totally destroyed. All right, I came over here last night and I was messing around. I got the dent in this Jeep logo sort of hammered out a little bit, and then I did some Marglass Bondo filler on it. And it looks okay, it needs a little touching up. 
It'll never look new again, but it looks less screwed up than it was. I got the door working, but it doesn't shut all the way. And part of that is because this whole section of the door jam is dented in so bad. No. I'm gonna get the dent fix. I'm gonna weld some studs on there and see if I can pull that out. Okay. I have that sanded and kind of prepped, so I guess we'll start figuring out where to go with these guys. These are just a little, basically, piece of welding rod with a like mushroom end on it, and you put it in that dent fix stud gun welder. You put it on a low spot that you want to bring up. Pull the trigger. There we go. And it welds that little stud on there. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of those on there and then we'll start pulling on it with the slide hammer. Sometimes the stud doesn't stick. working. That was kind of coming out. Here we go. I'm totally, I don't know, I'm totally sort of getting it. I keep breaking those studs off. I'm like really having to yank on this thing and those are the smaller studs that you can use but I don't have any of the bigger ones available so I'm gonna have to sand off all these broken studs, get some clean metal again, and then we're gonna keep hammering on this. And this is coming together. This is getting closer. The door is basically, you can see like the top of this whole thing needs to come out a little bit and back a little bit. And then the center section will pull out and be good too. So I'm gonna throw the slide hammer on a couple more times all right, the truck and trailer are ready. It is Thursday evening. I'm off work, but I still actually have to go in tomorrow. I got this door painted last night. This is the passenger one. The driver's one is finally starting to dry. This one is still tacky, but check this out. I'm kind of out of time, but I'm going to, I have to kind of button this up. So I'll probably sort of fix a few of these little dents on here, slam some Bondo on it, put some primer on it and call it done. So that's really the only major things I got to do tonight is sort of button those up. I still have a pretty substantial leak from the transfer case, which I think is just the Speedo drive. Probably gonna have to just ignore that. Yeah, it's Speedo drive for sure. Um, which that's basically leaking because I put a whatever 28 year old part in a uh, brand new transfer case. So that thing's leaking. It's going to be fine. I topped off fluids last night. So that's where we're at. I got to go fix that door up and then we are going to load this thing tonight, throw tool bags in it. And then tomorrow I'm going to leave from work to start heading to Moab. So when I put the door on, it goes into the hinges over here fine and everything looks okay, but there's a, uh, there's like a bolt head on the door that whacks into this little spot right here. And I think my, I think what I'm going to do is loosen these hinges a little bit and I can draw the lower hinge forward. This upper hinge, I can't really do anything about. So I'll probably do a little bit of adjusting that and hitting this with a hammer, knocking that dent in, and then that's about it. I really think that in the long run, this thing needs basically a whole quarter panel. So after this trip, if I'm still stoked on this Jeep, then I'll start looking into a replacement tub to like rob parts off of. But for now, just got to kind of work with what I got. This thing's still kind of tacky, but at least it's yellow. Let's see here. It latches. It's not happy about it though. Oh, we got it to there. The door shuts. Sorry, I just about tripped. 
This is terrible, but it gets to that first catch. It's not on the second safety catch, but I feel like that's a win for now. I'm gonna cut all these guys off. I'll smear a little coat of Bondo on that and primer that, and then we are going to call this thing done for now. All right, what a pain, but that's working again. I really look forward to fixing this properly because it's total garbage right now, but I don't have time for that. It's now seven o'clock and I'm supposed to be loading that puppy on the trailer. Thirty-six grit scratches, and good enough for me to smear a little bondo on. All right, here's my paint cabinet. Got all kinds of goodies in here. What I'm going to use right now is bondo glass or mar glass or short strand fiberglass reinforced body filler. So we'll do some of that, and I'm going to need this guy out of here. This is some stuff that'll be good for going like right over the biggest of the dents and even those little holes that you saw in there from the old fiberglass fender flares that this thing had when I first got it. All right, that is sort of hardening up. I'm gonna get on it with the cheese grater. See if we can knock some of this down before it hardens all the way. Good enough is good enough on this one in the uh, words of David Freiberger. All right, there we've got our last little skim coat of Bondo on there. I will sand that down with probably 150 grit and we will just shoot primer right over that. I will see if I wanna deal with the, with uh, this yellow paint drying, if I if I'm feeling froggy, I might um, throw a primer on that and then throw a little yellow paint on it just so it looks good going down the road and in pictures. You know, up close you'll be like, oh my gosh, it's junk. But that's kind of how it goes. Look at that! It looks pretty good. It's definitely wavy, but at least it doesn't just look like hammered garbage. So I'm going to throw a little primer on it. I just got some duplicolor, sandable, whatever. A little bit of rattle can primer. I'll do basically just the primer on the Bondo sections and then I'll probably go and scuff with a Scotch-Brite pad and we'll just shoot a whole bunch of this thing yellow this evening. I think I'm not going to get it loaded up tonight because I'm actually waiting on t-shirts to show up, so I'm gonna end up having to come home after work tomorrow and load all this stuff up anyway, so. Um, all right, I'm gonna get to spraying this stuff, a little primer on there, and we'll get to the next step here shortly. This is one of those projects where you just like hammer it out, get it done, and say you're gonna fix it later, and then you never do. That looks good enough. That looks good enough. Sweet. Dude, kind of stoked. That looks all right. And that looks all right. This part here is still hammered. That part's also hidden behind the flyer. So uh, I guess I'm going to scuff some more stuff and then we'll shoot some yellow on here. I got to admit, this paint looks really good. The color is cool, the finish is cool, the fact that it covers as well as it does, coming right out of a rattle can is pretty neat. I just feel like a total hack doing this. Alright, that's good enough for that. Look at that quarter panel, guys! It's junk, but it's yellow. It's yellow junk. Sick. Oh, I gotta get back over here. That looks terrible. Alright, there you have it. 
painted yellow. This does not match that, and that does not match that or that. But I don't care. This thing is going to look pretty good once I get the fender flares on it. And rock sliders back on it. And I'm out driving it. So, I think that's pretty much it for tonight. <laughs>